So welcome to our last installment of the short draft with Chaser episodes. Our episode today is featuring Sorka. Hello. All right. So for the first couple uh, days after dealing with the uh, Duke of the Lost. Dealing, uh, getting the manor sorted out is it's going slowly at first. But the entire group is able to section off who goes where. Uh, and it has been thoroughly decided that you're taking the north side of the building. Mainly because okay. the south and some of the east uh, side of the building faces the road leading up a lot better. Uh, so the room that you're taking at the very top of that wing is the one that the Duke used to inhabit. But you're able to get that cleared out pretty well. And the ballrooms down below on the first floor at least are being reconverted into a library so i like the sound of that the west wing is being converted into a guild hall the east wing is being converted into a hunter's lodge slash barracks with how Hunter's Lodges usually go, it's going to be, all right, so we are designed to have 10 people sleep here comfortably. Cool, so we're packing in 30. Most of us aren't going to be here the entire time. Who are you getting? And the south side is going to take that front entrance and turn it into mostly a tavern. And that south side is the one that Dionysus is taking. Okay, that makes sense. And uh, which, of course, leaves the west wing for uh, justice. Azeroth is currently content with being just the... Uh, main guard that is overseeing things here. Okay. After a few weeks of going over work, uh, you're able to piece together a lot of the paperwork. Uh, within the first week, uh, Justice does leave. Uh, Mentioning something about a mine to the northeast of where you guys are. Okay. And that uh, they're wanting to check it out. A couple days afterwards, the rest of the party is suggesting of going into town. Seems that everyone has something to do there. Uh, Wells is wanting to check on guild stuff in town. Dionysus wants to talk with the uh, uh, the elders, and you have through looking through some of the notes that you've taken into your room, realized that there is a small apothecary in town. So, the four of you, Tala included, pack up and head into town. Shortly after getting okay. into town, the majority of people split off, but Tala is sticking beside you. Wells is heading off towards the docks, and Dionysus just goes somewhere. You're not exactly sure where. <laughs> He wandered off as Dionysus is wont to do. 
Uh, you do see a building, not that far into town, off of this side, uh, off to your left, uh, that the it has heavy curtains, and the sign post has a very overgrown potted plant just hanging okay. from it. <laughs> Well, I will check the door to see if it is if it is if it is open, like if the or if it is locked. <laughs> it is open. Uh, inside, it's fairly dark, but you know, good handful of candles. You're able to see around. It's just not the easiest thing, and. You're able to hear the shufflings of uh, feet in the room. Okay, After a well, I will. Of time, you're able to start to see the outline of something over near the back wall. Okay, I will um, quietly say hello. <laughs> Yes, hello. And this figure stands up fully. Uh, and you're able to see that there are horns protruding from their head, going out and back, things hanging off of them and attached to them. A long uh, robe over their body. Their body silhouetted by what you can tell is some light. And they turn, and there is a very old looking tiefling man. His deep red skin, very weathered and aged and wrinkly. His mustache, it goes uh, all the way to about his mid torso. Uh, but his beard is nicely trimmed. From what you have read of tieflings, uh, the masculine ones that do grow facial hair, uh, mustache grows very quickly, but is always thin, like wispy hairs. Uh, okay. But the beard is able to grow in a little bit fuller. It looks like he does keep himself reasonably trimmed. And you're able to finally see that the stuff on his horns look to be vines and strings and leaves and feathers. How can I be of assistance to you, child? Yes, I've been doing some research and I learned that you are the apothecary in town and I would like to train with you to um, hone my healing skills? That is a very admirable goal to do with apothecary skills. By chance, do you have any previous training in healing others? I do. I have a, a natural gift. Oh. Really wise uh, an understanding of the plants that is a good leeway into work it makes teaching so much faster and he starts moving to uh, open up a handful of drawers uh, that was empty that one we might be able to make something out of that. Yes, some. Uh, here, do we have any thing? Uh, last. Out again. 
need to do more gathering here soon. Uh, hopefully my shipments will arrive soon as well. But in the meantime, that is safe. Right. So, your natural gifting of understanding of the herbs. Where do I need to pick up? I have, um, I have a working knowledge of what they look like and, um, I've read about them as to like what they can do, but kind of beyond that, like I, I have an understanding of, you know, like if, if I see a plant, I know like, oh, okay, I know that that, that can be used, but, um, it's rudimentary um, at this point. Um, Most of your natural healing is arcane, isn't it? Yes. But I am very well read. That is at least a start. <sighs> well, then, let us... Go with the basics. I need some assistance in getting some herbs from a nearby forest area. Uh, I would normally ask uh, others to help me, but seeing as you're wanting to learn yourself, I might as well bring you in with it as well, hopefully the area that we head to is not too close to the encampment or the uh, Ula's Semp. They have been a little bit less than friendly with me since I apparently picked the berries for one of their festivals. Ah. Luckily, Haglais kind we need to have tea again though i don't think that she ever drinks tea at least not alone but i digress um let me prepare and we will be on our way Sounds good. He heads off to the back room, and as soon as he's in the back room, you are able to finally notice that Tala is, like, looking through, like, jars of, uh, like, preserved plants and things like that. Like, just very curiously. Did you want to join me in look and learning this? Oh, well, I'm not necessarily sure if I can. If it'll help me with what I'm wanting to do, but I will at least join to make sure that you are safe, my lady. I appreciate you. Sir Azraith has already mentioned to me that I am going to be the main charge over the rest of you while he is looking up at the manor. But while at the manor, my training will continue. And I think you're growing stronger every day. I hope it's strength that I'm feeling. What's going on? A little under the weather. I, I think I got 
but a bit more than expected last time. It's it's nothing. It's nothing. I'm. Oh yeah, no no really... no! You can't say shit like that in front of me. <laughs> um, There's no pain. It's just just some bleeding, and but I was able to uh, get that dealt with. Yeah, I'm pumping a cure wounds into her. Or him. Uh you can uh you don't even need to write off the spell uh as you get ready to do your magic. You can innately feel nothing is medically wrong. Okay. Cure wounds would do nothing. Okay. So this is just like an uneasiness that's just going on right now or give me a give me a medicine check I should have put this warning point in but I didn't necessarily think that this was going to happen this session oh nope By the way, when we get like mugs, I'm wanting a mug of this size with our logo on it. I can't dump in two Keurig pods into my mug. Then what is the point? That's true enough. <laughs> uh, that's a that's a fourteen. Fourteen. Um. You know that you don't know a lot about tabaxi anatomy. Uh, but if you can guess anything, uh, he is... It's probably not a stress thing. Especially with his upbeat demeanor. But... You're not fully certain what it is. Okay. Uh, but you do get to mark off one of the passes for uh, your medicine check uh, skill bonus. We're going to get through those today. Come hell or high water. So, about 10 minutes later, the old man comes back out. He's wearing a pair of overalls, and you're kind of noticing that the outfit that he was wearing before wasn't necessarily robes, but more of a top and probably, like, skirt of some kind. Okay. He's wearing the same top. Or he's stuffed his uh, entire robes into these overalls. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> his tail sticking out the back end through a very precisely made uh, hole into the overalls. Well stitched. And with the way that it looks and smells... He uses these overalls for gathering materials quite often. Even as you start stepping outside, the smell of the apothecary, which is the same as the smell of going into any metaphysical store or herb shop, mm -hmm. travels with him. Okay. There are worse smells in the world. Oh, yeah. Clean, clean and green is not bad. <laughs> oh, absolutely not. So, the trip forward, uh, it 
takes a couple hours. And you notice that he seems to at least know where he's going. Okay. For the most part. Uh, and as you get farther in, give me a perception check. Okay. Uh, that is a 10. Putting in a small message that hate that recently Discord isn't doing that. Uh, you can message back on the answer to that. Uh, for the 10, you do notice that you're starting to get closer to a, like, natural opening. Uh, a, a little glen that is okay. not that far away from the uh, initial edge of the forest and in the glen you see some areas that are actually roped off okay and there are uh, little fabric tags hanging on each side uh, each siding of the ropes some okay. of them are squares some of them are triangles like there's several different shapes okay this is where I put most of my materials, and these ones are ones that I pick often and replant thoroughly. Okay. Uh, if you could get me this list of materials, that would be most handy. Okay. And so, like, these, these little flags, do they denote, like, what each... Um, each thing is each thing is yeah sorry yes. uh, <laughs> okay you are able to <laughs> correlate them though you do notice that uh the ones that he's written down are like common terms uh but the tags themselves are like the more scholarly okay so but i Okay, but I would have read... You've read some of it, so you're able to piece together, like, this is probably this, this is definitely this. Okay. Uh, the layman's one is this one, and it got its name because this word is just a little bit too hard to pronounce, as is. Uh, give me a medicine check real quick while you are doing this. You have okay. advantage because of the notes. Okay. So that is a 22. 22. Mark off two passes. And it takes you about half an hour to pick all of the things. Okay. And in this time period, you do notice as you're finishing that Tala is sitting down. Uh, on one of the logs in the area. Okay. Like, there's been logs that have been placed throughout that have drag marks uh, underneath them. It looks like these are logs that the apothecary uh, uses for sitting down in between things. Okay, that makes sense. And Tala is sitting on one of them, and he doesn't necessarily look 
the bass. It looks like he's in a little bit of pain. Tala, I will ask again. Are you okay? Yeah. I think it was what I ate this morning. And mix that with uh, lots of walking. Also, the cut is... Not exactly the... I'm okay. I just need to catch my breath. Give me another medicine check at advantage. Okay. You know these symptoms. Kind yeah, of. The, my, my brain is kind of... Like, has... Uh, 14. 14. You know you know these symptoms. But, like, your... Your caring instincts are kind of overriding what it is. And off the top of your head, panic is mildly setting. And you're thinking maybe it's food poisoning. Maybe it's a creature that... Tala had protected the party from overnight. Because uh, it did take you a couple days to get here. Yeah. Um, can I ask the apothecary for some help in, like, trying to figure out what's going on with Tala? Because I'm super, super concerned at this point. Like... Like I'm I just like I'm like I need to make this better. The apothecary comes over. And at this point Tala is just like half like almost doubled over. But just like holding on and breathing hard. Well, what seems to be the issue? Oh, Lad, you don't look good. What is? What are his symptoms? Uh, intestinal discomfort, um, and pain at the wound site. Um, not pain at the wound site. Pain in not the, pain at the wound. Uh, pain in uh, uh, stomach and uh, lower abs. Oh, okay. So, okay, so abdominal pain um, and just generally feeling um, like not well enough to be walking. Hmm. Let me see, let me see. Uh, could be food poisoning, uh, walks over and just like grabs Tala by the chin and starts moving him around a little bit and Tala gives a like angered look, but doesn't really fight back on it. I would say possibly a herbal issue goes into his little gathering bag and drops it down and you can see that his gathering pouch is actually a like small apothecary set okay that has a fabric outside that looks to have more pocket between the wood and the actual outside area Chew on this, uh, and that should help with the stomach issues as far as a, uh, that should help with 
most problems there. Um, reaches into uh, underneath his uh, overalls, pulls out a like reasonably sized book. This is for you, young lady, and I personally prefer uh, this kind of stick uh, when burnt a little bit at the end. It will be able to write well for a little while. Uh, doesn't smudge too much. Uh, but I would suggest inking later. Uh, good for easy notes until you can get a quill pack as he taps the side of his box. Thank you. And he does give you the name of the herb. Okay. Uh, that he just uh, prescribed. Yeah, that one's burned into my memory now. Give me another perception check real quick. Oh, eight. Eight. All right. Tala does seem to start feeling better, and he's able to stand up after a couple minutes. Gets his shield repositioned on his arm, hand on his, uh, with it, like his hand holding the uh, scabbard for his sword. Ready to continue. Well, and I, I suggest we take things slowly if if we have time. Um, I really don't want any of us overdoing it out here. Oh, of course not, of course not, of course not. Uh, there's more things that we need to gather. Uh, there's a small stream up this way. Uh, there are some herbs and fungi and moss that we need to add to the collection. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll follow you then. You follow him, it takes about another hour. Uh, it's a good thing that you showed up like at the earliest part of the morning, initially. And you're able to get to the next area and he pulls out an, another list. Uh, two pieces of paper are uh, makes this list and I'll give you the more difficult one to brush you up a little bit faster. Okay. And he starts wandering off. Give me a medicine check at advantage. Okay. Uh, that's a 12. Well, you will get one pass, and it takes you almost an hour to finally collect everything. I wasn't as well read on these, apparently. <laughs> also, he did say he gave you the harder of the two. Yeah. Uh, give me another perception check. Oh, that's a six. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. What is your bonus on that again? That's a plus three. I'm just rolling badly. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, did you add in the fact that you're level five and your proficiency bonus went up? 
Uh, yeah. Is it a trained skill? No. Okay. Might be by the time we're done. Yeah. Um, I think, I mean, I think I did, like... Let me just make sure that I am. Yeah, level five. It should, yeah, I mean, it should automatically be... Because it is trained, right? Your perception is... Well, trained I'm not... I don't have it, like, it's not one of my... Proficiencies. My, yeah, it's not a proficiency. So... Uh... So your plus three is because of wisdom. Yeah. Okay. I mean, my wisdom's not terrible, but it's not like one of my highest. But you also don't have uh, that as a trained skill. Mm -mm. Nope. That would so, have been making it and, easier. Yeah. And I'm just rolling terribly on perception. Or I usually roll terribly on perception for some reason. Yeah, I don't get it. Especially today. I'm in my head too much, I guess. Yeah, probably. <laughs> you are able to get the stuff finished out. Uh, you do notice that there looks to be a footprint uh, in the stream. Like, within the sandy area of uh, the stream. What does this footprint look like? Humanoid. Okay. Fairly large. And it's large. still like, like inside the stream? Yeah. So it's fresh? Fairly. Oh, that's great. Like, I was like, la, 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 while something stepped into the stream. Wonderful. <laughs> that sounds about right. <laughs> Okie dokie. Um, does it look any like it's familiar to me at all? It is a uh, it is a large humanoid. Uh, not like large size, but like this person is probably fairly tall. Okay. Uh, but... And I don't think it's it's our apothecary friend. No, no. Uh, okay. Your apothecary friend is wearing boots for one. Oh, okay. Um, like he's wearing knee-high leather boots. Oh, yeah. So he wouldn't be taking those off till it cross the stream. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Okay. I'm concerned now because <laughs> like I did not see something that like should be like very visible to me. Um, well, there we go. Um, can I look around actively? Yes, give me an active uh perception range. No whammies, no whammies. No, that's even worse. That's a seven. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, the only thing you do notice as you're looking around is Tala is sitting down again. Um, Tala, are you feeling unwell again? It hasn't really passed. It kind of comes and goes. Do you have any more of that herb? I've chewed on all the amount that he gave me. Okay. Give me a perception at advantage. <laughs> I freaking need it. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is terrible.
Oh, that's better. Both of them were good. Of course. <laughs> 23. 23. You notice that uh, Allah's uh, pants have blood on them. Okay. Um, with my knowledge, do I think this is the time for me to pull out my arcane like stuff and nope. like? Okay. Um, where is the like? Where is the blood coming from, Blake? Uh, the blood looks to be like lower groin area um does it does it look like it's like soaking through the fabric from the inside or it's splattered on there mostly splatter uh but it does uh not splatter it it, it does look like it's coming from inside okay um Tala, what happened? Like, uh, I don't remember seeing that you... Was that where the wound always was? Yeah, I... These are the... Second pair I'm gonna have to... Clean out in the stream looks like um am i able to find like some fabric or anything like that in my um yeah you probably found uh there's a good bit of fabric that you probably stashed from the manor okay i'm just gonna tear strips of it i feel like i need to bind this wound um do i remember like I don't have any of the herbs on me, right? I gave them all to the. Oh, you do have some herbs with you. Do I remember if any of them were good for like, like, putting on a wound, on like an open wound? Yes, uh, the moss that you had picked from the uh, from inside of the stream, though it's best if uh, it is dried. <laughs> um. And the moss I have is damp, I'm assuming, still. Oh, yeah. um, you pulled it from the bottom of the... Okay, I'm going to shake it as much as I can to like get as much moisture out of it. And you then, do like... have precipitation as a free spell. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can dry it with, with that. I Real always forget about the bit. Uh, Give me a... Give me a medicine check at advantage. Uh, 23 23 you're gleam a handful of things uh within the moment one uh it doesn't have as much of its healing properties if dried through magic it does have some of it still but it is best if dried naturally Two. That's understandable. Tala's 12. He's probably turning 13 within this cycle of uh, seasons. And you're remembering something you remember uh, that you read from one of the uh, books back in the day. Tabaxi Reach what is considered as adulthood sometime between 10 and 13. Okay. You know these symptoms. Yeah. You've dealt with these symptoms. Yeah. And okay. A mild look of panic is setting into his face. Because they thought he dealt with the problem. Yep. 
So I'm going to like ask if there are herbs that he normally takes. Mm, or nothing really. I eat what most of my other kinfolk do. You know, a lot of meat, uh, seasoning. I, I begrudgingly will have whatever vegetable and herb stuff is brought out with meal time. Okay. Do I know if any of the herbs that we have are have any analgesic properties? Yes. Uh, one of the uh, plants that you picked from uh, near the stream. And it is most potent when fresh. Good, good. I will have him eat. Thank you. Um, like just a very small amount since I don't really know dosages. So we'll just take this in increments. Just like maybe like a leaf just to like be on the safe side and then we can kind of like go from there. Yeah. All right, let me do two very particular rolls. That one. And all right. So as you're handing the uh herb to uh Tala, the apothecary like despite his age, like, shuffles over to you fairly quickly. Why are you giving him that? That is that's something that you would normally Why are you giving him that? I'm going to pull the apothecary aside and very quietly whisper um, like out of hearing range of Tala because and, and to be like you are sworn to secrecy <laughs> like this goes no further than the two of us um, this is a female problem she looks to you then looks to Tala then back to you He is. If I had known that, takes his thing, slings it over his neck. And I'm just gonna say, like, I only just figured this out, and I, I don't want this to be uncomfortable for Tala. Yes, 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 yes. Understandable. Understandable. Um, he opens up his. Uh, box and hold out ha uh, the and that would normally drop all the way down. Hold, please. <laughs> do you do as asked? Yes. All right. He reaches in and pulls out a uh, basically a tea, uh, what looks like a tea bag, and starts rummaging through his stuff putting into the tea bag, checking the things that he's just recently done. Uh, it's best if actually done in tea, but we're late. And I'll be able to do this. Do you know if he wants them to continue? Like, ever? I don't think so. But that would be a question for him. Um, I, I'll, I can ask him privately when we 
get back to the apothecary and possibly make a more permanent solution later on. But for now, he takes the other half from you and clips back up, slings around his shoulder. I apologize for not seeing this sooner. I. We can only hope that we're in time to make this better. And honestly, I even messed it, so. You don't necessarily expect a young lad to have such problems. Yes. Here goes nothing. And he walks back over to uh, Tala. Uh, I need you to spit uh, that out and start chewing on this. Try to not break the bag. And drink extra water while doing so. Let the water sit in your mouth for a few seconds before swallowing, and do not swallow the packet. Tala doubles over for just a second and puts the bag in his mouth, the strings hanging out, takes a huge swig and just Looks up. Is this food poisoning going to kill me? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. We'll we'll get this all sorted. I promise. If you say, my lady. As you are watching over him, you hear the sounds of uh, footprints coming up behind you. Okay. As you turn to look, noticing that Tala is, despite facing towards you, not paying attention, you see uh, three fairly tall individuals. Okay. They are dressed in uh, long fur cloaks, hoods pulled very far forward. And you're standing in front of three orcs. The shorter of the three, by only a few inches, has lots of runic paint across their face and arms. At seeing them, the apothecary moves to behind you a little bit. Okay. What are you doing so far away from town? Uh, just gathering some supplies. Like, we're not going to be staying. Do you work for him? I am working with him. She puts her hand on the uh, handle of a fairly crude main, uh, made blade that hangs off of her hip. We meant no disrespect. We meant no harm. Do you work for the one that lives north? The one that lives north? 
in the large building. Yeah. The short one. The short one. No, 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 no. Um, we actually um, dispatched the short one and are trying to make things better. And you were removing his people from the town? Yes. We're working on it. It's just we, we want to make sure that it's done in a way that they don't come back. And we want to make this whole barony a better place to live for everyone who lives here. You see this place as a barony? She we looks see to this her left and right for a second and says something oh, God. that you don't understand. Yeah. Um that's what we were told that it was, but you know, we're we're good people. And and we just want to make this area better and so that, you know, bad things aren't happening to people. And that people can just live here in, in harmony. She takes her hand off of her weapon and takes a step closer to you. Oh, I'm going to be brave and like just stand like stand my ground but I just want to like run away. If you can keep promises then you will have strong allies in this town. Oh, Our chieftain Hagga, she promised us home here, and yet we still forge in these forests. What is it that you would like to have happen? We want to be in the town, and... We want to make sure that the war breed don't interfere with us. Um, As a note, uh, war breed is a term that you've heard many a time before. Mm -hmm. It is, in D&D &D terms, half orcs. And you know of one that lives in town. Okay. Marcus. Okay. Um, we if the one war breed that we are aware of in town we we don't want to see him hurt can can there be a coexistence that one in town has put down weapons from what we've seen we know of one war breed that stalks the woods we do not know her intentions as long as we know that they will not pick up arms against us. We will not worry about them. Okay. Um, I cannot speak for everyone um, that I am involved with, but I 
I personally don't see a problem with us all trying to like work together to make this area the best that it can be. Um, having a diverse group of people allows us to have unique perspectives. And I see that as a good thing. People increases the strength. This we will agree to. Um, let me go back and arrange for a meeting. um for your people to attend so that we can work out the specifics and um we will send a messenger to let you know and if there's a specific place that you would like it to be please let me know now and that way i can see if that's something that's feasible There is a rock that protrudes over the lake. Most meetings that we have dealt with in the past when living here, negotiations are done there. That is good information to have. We have, we have not yet gotten to know a lot of the customs. So, um, let me arrange this meeting, um, so that we can move forward to all of us becoming a closer community. Next time that you track into the forest, it'd be best if you leave a child that is in the middle of the moon behind. Yeah, we were not aware at the beginning that that's what was going on. We apologize for any problems that that caused. She says something in Orcish before turning and walking away. The other two standing to look at you for a moment and flanking behind her. You are much braver than I am, child. I don't know about brave. My knees are knocking together at the moment. I just, I don't want to, I, I don't want to be the person that creates a problem. <laughs> Speaking of problems, we should probably get back to the, uh, to my little shop and finish out preparing yours. Yes, I would appreciate that very much. It takes a little bit longer to get back, but you do get back to town fairly easily. And the apothecary mentions that he will work on a uh box for you to be able to take with you and it will be ready f by first light okay and he does also mention that despite all that you helped with getting it will cost 
a fairly steep price of eight silver. That's fine. Um, I'm just going to hand him a, a gold. He looks at it and has a fairly confused look on his face before he goes back into behind his counter and opens up his box and starts mumbling and what you can assume is abyssal before okay. coming back to you and handing you two silver pieces i'm just going to set the two silver pieces on the on the counter all right he looks at them and then at you and then to Tala. I will help deal with this issue that you have. I, I will leave the two of you. He nods and Tala goes and sits on a stool. When you get outside, it's later in the afternoon, getting closer to evening. And there is a spot near the uh, tavern where you see a kind of unusual sight for you. Okay. Uh, you see a uh gnome a fairly old oh uh gnome man okay uh and he's actually sitting on one of the barrels a cushion underneath him and a stack of books uh on the ground and leaning on the barrel itself next to him is a very large woman and she is also, like the people that you saw before, wearing a, like, large fur cloak. And its hood, its large hood pulled forward. And she has a very large tankard with lid. Yeah, this is the way I get pulled into the van, right? Two bucks. <laughs> <laughs> and the gnome seems to be drinking wine. Whatever she is drinking, you're not sure. Okay. And the main way you can tell that it is a uh, woman is you hear him, uh, you hear the gnome as you getting closer, I'm, I'm I'm assuming that you're getting closer to them, right? Yes, because I have this pull when <laughs> books are involved. <laughs> uh, you do hear him uh, belt out a laugh. Uh, most ladies don't treat, uh, don't even talk to me, let alone insult me to my face. <laughs> and he takes a sip of his wine. And as she reaches out and picks up the tankard, you're able to see the dark green skin with aged tattoos on the back of her wrinkled hands. As she uh, chuckles and says something in obviously gnomish but very bad gnomish um yeah i'm just gonna keep like moving and so the books are all on the ground they're in a nice neat stack on the ground so i'm gonna tilt my head sideways to see if I can read any of the um, read any of the spines. Can I see the spines? 
None of the spines are facing out, but you can read the cover of the top book. Okay. Which is... Uh, uh, Mandan historical charts. Okay. And as you're looking, you hear the distinct voice from the gnome. Can I help you, masked one? Uh, I apologize. I have uh, this uh, supernatural draw to books. <laughs> and I noticed you have a stack. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I keep these ones with me quite often. I've memorized most of the books, uh, most of these books myself. But they make the less than fully accessible chairs over at the bakery a little bit more reasonable. Okay, I understand. And who might you be? Uh, my name is Sorka. Sorka. A pleasure to meet you. I A pleasure to meet you. Lucas Handover. And this lovely woman next to me is Hagla Moonkist. That is the name that I was given in the forest, correct? Uh, yes, Hagla is the first name that you were given in the forest. It is a distinct pleasure to meet you both. Well, by the way that you're dressed, I'm guessing you are one of the ones that is helping the Mr. Dionysus and Dallas. <laughs> I'm just going to start laughing. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, I am. Very good, very good. We are two of the five members of the elders that look over this town. Uh, others being uh, Vidalis, as I believe that you've met him. Uh, there's yes. also Samuel Thatcher. Uh, and, uh, Quaz Stonewright. Um, yes, I have not met those last two. And, and I am honored to have, have met you two now. Um, we definitely want to make sure that we're doing the best for everyone here. And I know uh, that Dionysus is very diplomatic. The uh, woman chuckles. He brought a bottle of wine to discussions. I would say that is diplomatic. Yeah, that sounds about right. He promised my kin housing in the town, but I'll see what we, what the future truly holds. Uh, yeah, I believe I met some of your kin in the forest today. Um, I was with the uh, apothecary to gather some some herbs. I'm endeavoring to learn from the apothecary. And um, I spoke to them about the very same thing of us having a meeting so that we can make sure that we have the diversity required to make this a truly I don't know. 
words are not coming to my brain now. Um, I'm not I'm not quite as diplomatic as Dionysus. Oh, but you do seem much smarter than him. <laughs> I try. At least more well read. And that we can drink. <laughs> Are you able to drink through that? I manage. Mm -hmm. Well, um, of my stack, I'll let you borrow one. Uh, sign of good faith and all, and also kind of makes us that way. Either you had to come back down here and talk, or it gives me a reason to go and see the manor after all these years. Uh, the third book down the uh, brown leather book, uh, that's one that I think you might find quite interesting. Oh, I appreciate it very much. And just so you know, I am working on a library at the manor that will be open to everyone. It will be. And I will make sure that we have seating for everyone. That will be quite lovely. I do hope that uh, it is not too terrible, but we will cut short, seeing as uh, the evening is not yet here, and I have dinner plans already. Well, I appreciate your time. I appreciate your book. I shall. And I look forward to speaking with you again. And you are welcome in my library anytime. I look forward to its completion. And then I will kind of head back towards the apothecary. As you fin uh, as you're starting to head back, the apothecary steps out, uh, handing Tala a uh, small box before locking the door and uh, moving around the side of his building. And I'll, I'll just wave and say, have a good night. Thank you for everything. Yes, yes. Uh, your kit should be ready by first light. Great. I look forward to speaking with you again. Tala walks up to you his head low, his ears drooping. Apparently I have to follow the regiment with this for several moons. It will be okay in the end. I apologize that we didn't catch things sooner. He said that I need to get onto a particular herb added diet. Okay. If I want to not hurt like that anymore. I apologize that you had to go through that. But we'll figure out adding that herb um, in, even if um, we have to make a special shaker or something like that with it in it that's nondescript but yours that you bring with you to the table. Sorka? Mm hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. As I know, this is the first time that he's ever called you by your name.
And trust me, my heart grew three sizes that day. So, I mean, he already had a special place in my heart, but like this has endeared me to him even more. So, um, the two of you head over to the Black Barrel. Uh, you have dinner. It's mainly the two of you. You do see Wells come in and eat for a moment and then head upstairs. And before you even have a chance to head up, uh, even head over to talk to Marcus, he actually walks up to your table and sets down two keys. Uh, both of them with uh, bits of fabric on them. This room is bigger. This room's right next to yours. It's kind of in the middle. It, they're all up on the third floor. Okay. Unless people pay a lot and you are not planned to be here. These rooms are yours. You're going to be the council over this town and area. Figured. If you're going to be in town, why make you sleep on a hobble? We've already seen the changes that are coming in. Oh, well, we hope to have changes that will make things better for everybody. I'm so tired of seeing the pained look in people's faces. Well, my pained look won't go for, won't go away for a while, but oh. that's just because I'm on my feet all fucking day. Well, that's a different kind of pain. <laughs> <laughs> I am talking about that pain that is coming from their souls right now. The, the pain look in behind here, their eyes. Mine. Yeah. Are we going for a lighter meal or more, uh, more protein based? Uh, believe more protein based would be a good idea um, today. And I just kind of like side eye Tala and kind of nod. I'll see what we can do. And he heads off. After a little while, uh, the bar lad comes over and sets down a pretty good sized uh, meat platter for Tala and then a thing of. Like a, uh, I think like a beef stew. Okay. In loaf. Okay. But the stew is a lot thicker than you've probably seen before. That's fine. It's been a lot of walking and <laughs> stress today. So that and, sounds like a very comforting meal. <laughs> and as he sets them down, uh, can I get you any drinks? Um... Like, just a couple of your mildest ales. Can do. Heads off and very shortly comes back with two mugs and sets them in front of the two of you. The meal goes by pretty weaselly. The rest of the night goes on without any problems. You are the first to wake up of uh, all of your compatriots. And as you're going around, you do notice that uh, Wells's room's door is slightly open. And as you just like half look in, you realize that it's not been touched all night. Okay. As you get downstairs, you see that there is like a couple loaves of bread still on a couple tables. And you see the uh, bar lad sleeping uh, on one of the leather couches. It's one of two leather couches. Okay. A uh, wolf pelt. Uh, blanket laid across him. 
Okay. Um, I'm just going to like go outside for a little bit just to kind of get some fresh air. All right. As you get outside, you see that the sun is just starting to creep up on the horizon. And with how quiet it is in the morning, the first things that you're able to hear are uh, just sounds of ocean. Well, extremely large lake, just shy of <laughs> oceaning in size. And you're able to smell bake, uh, baking bread. You hear the sounds of uh, noodles being made off in some shop. And as you're looking around, you do see the apothecary opening up his shop. I'm going to have let him have like a little bit of time to get like settled in his shop before I go over there. I'm going to go down closer to the lake and just kind of listen to the waves kind of coming on shore for a little bit just to. All right. Reorient, my, reorient myself after yesterday. As you're sitting there. Uh, after a short bit of time, uh, you hear footsteps coming up the wharf. I'll look over. There is a early 20s uh, half-elf man uh, walking towards you with a bucket and a fishing pole. Okay. Mind if I take a spot next to you? Nope. Sits down, casts the line in. Give me a quick perception check. Okie doke. Uh, 13. That was good for today. Yeah. <laughs> there was no bait on his hook. Oh, okay. So what kind of fish are in the, uh, the lake here? Oh, there's a lot of different fish. And the lake itself, it's, it's a little weird. It, Depending on the area uh, up that way, it's a lot more fresh water due to the currents. But down this way, near the end of the dock, you can actually catch ocean fish, salt waters. Interesting. Right here. It's a good middle ground. Yeah, you know, there's. Not too many rats running in the morning. Not a lot of gilded lilies that fall into the water. It's a good spot. Is this your usual spot? No, no. My usual spot is uh, a little more secluded. So what brings you here today? Well, I wanted you to pass on a note. I saw you come into town. I heard that you came into town with Dio. And that human that's been poking around the docks. It's 
You need to tell Theo that the Rat King doesn't want to have to show its teeth. Okay. It's a note that's been passed around. Being disbanded would not be good for anyone. Pulls up his line, shows the empty hook, and then drops it back in. Okay. I'll pass on the the uh, message. Make sure the uh, human hears you say it. Okay. Would you look at that. There's bites this morning after all. He pulls up and you see a bottle with a uh, string wrapped around it at the end of his hook. Perfect. This is the last bit of work I'm doing for the rest of the week, apparently. You have a good day, all right? Yeah, you too. He drops it in the water and you see some fish scurry around in there. And he gets up and leaves. Curiouser and curiouser. I'll sit there for another couple minutes and then I'll head over to the apothecary. All right. When you go to the apothecary, uh, it, the old man is setting in some, like pulling out some drawers and filling them up with stuff. Ah, a little late this morning, but be fine. Your container already set for you. Thank you. It looks like a uh, satchel very much like his. Okay. But new. You can tell that his is fairly old. Yeah. Well worn. Yeah. Now, if you don't mind, I will get back to organizing the leftovers from yesterday. And there's also uh, notes left for you to be able to help your young friend. I hope he's doing better this morning. Uh, he has not woken up yet. As far as I left before he woke up. So um, that's good news. Yes. I don't deal Thanks. with cat folk very often, but uh, the Tabaxius kind are not too hard to understand if I'm remembering right. Well, I know he appreciates your help, and uh, he and I will work together to get him through this. Until next time. I thank you again for all of your help, and it was lovely meeting you. Lovely meeting you. I didn't actually catch your name, though. Oh. That is uh, terrible on my part. My name is Sorka. Asri. Well, it's a pleasure to, to officially meet you, Asri. Pleasure.
as you head out of the apothecary, you find a nice spot, uh, basically across the street, to be able to sit and go through your the contents of your thing. You see uh, Justice walk into town, not really noticing you, and head into the apothecary for a little bit. As you finish going through the contents of your bag, you see at the very bottom are two silver pieces. <laughs> Noted. And next time I'll bring proper change. <laughs> Except the kind that he gives you. <laughs> <laughs> As you're sitting there chuckling to yourself about it, uh, you see Justice step out a mildly confused and concerned look upon his face before you start hearing these sounds of people running and screaming from the uh, near the wharf. As you look down to see what's going on, you see Dionysus sprinting up that direction. Oh, Lord. Not too terribly far behind him, you see Tala running as well. Uh, and several guards start flanking up and getting information behind Tala. What did I miss? Never yes. a dull moment. Never a dull moment. As you start making your way down towards the wharf, a ship that you saw kind of off in the distance early this morning is finally coming in and docking at the uh, upon the docks at the city. The first people to come off are just minor individuals. You see a uh, elf with black and white pattern motifing, including in hair, step off and start talking to Wells for a moment. Uh, looks that Wells approached the individual. You see the guard, uh, most of the guards walking back. As you get closer, you see the half elf that you talked to earlier sprint down the wharf, run up the gangplank, and from your position, you can see him dive tackle a drow, uh, the drought man captain, into the uh, captain's quarters. You look off to the side, seeing uh, Dionysus flanked by Tala and a mostly bald man with a shock of like a half ponytail of purple hair on his other side, a long yellow coat uh, trimmed in green. Okay. Purple sash and pants, foot wrappings and hand wraps. As you get a good look at him, you get a distinct feeling that the man that is currently talking and calmly talking to Dionysus is not alive. Okay. And as the implications of what this might mean can sink in, your eyes are then caught back to the ship. As a tall woman with red hair glistening in the sunlight, shocks of green through it, uh, starts stepping down the gangplank. A uh, suit of red plate armor plate going down her left side, her right arm completely bare. 
a large sword upon her back and a bag being carried. You recognize that Sola, the lieutenant of the Red Lotus, has made it back to your shores. Okay. And you can definitely tell that the ship that she is on is not a Red Lotus ship. Interesting. And as the camera pans up from that into the sky, it then pans back down into a courtyard where you can see the Baron of the White Rose sitting, drinking some tea, and a shadow comes across his table. The individual from the initial meeting standing there. Any news from our investment? They have dispatched the Duke and our first shipment of weapons was sent on the Jasper. And one of the others was found there as well. The Elagin of the Lotus Raven. knows of our plans. Well then. Looks like we need to send out someone to nip this in the bud. Send out someone. He'll make it to street. As always, my ballad rocks. And the camera fades to black. Okie doke. Thank you very much for joining me with this today. As we have done so far, we are doing our little bit of bragging moments. We are actually starting up on getting actual merch for a merch store put together. Like my autofocus turned back off real quick to be able to show off. Bam. Let me able to focus on here. Focus, please. Focus. Maybe, possibly, perhaps. No, no, not today. Not today. But these are the base stickers, fancier kind, that will be going up for the Black Barrel Tavern. There's also going to be ones of round sticker base. We are also going to be working on stickers of all the different classes, dealing with stuff from uh, the baronies themselves. And as far as the class ones go, there's going to be barony focus colors, generic colorations. And we're also going to be rolling out a lot of Alphabet Mafia colored stickers. So those are going to be our first run of items. Uh, we're also going to be making other merch in the future as we go, including mugs and water canteens, shirts, stuff like that. So be looking forward to that. And all of the certified guild members for the Guild Hall Gamers are going to be getting sticker packs so they can rep that too. When we have the details for our store up, I will put that link within our link tree, which you can always find right below us. Until next time, have fun, be safe, roll well.
Toodles.